Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Researching Mexican Art, Part 2. Um, if you'll remember from the last video, we went through and looked at creating our Google Doc for our search strings, copying and pasting. We looked at searching Swoop Search and some of the background behind searching things. We also went in and looked at SciWheel. So now we're going to start getting into that research so you can see how it all kind of flows together. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so we've got our screen shared here and we are again in the uh, art research guide. Remember, library homepage, research guides by subject, art, and that'll get you here, databases. Now you've got your top six art databases, but notice that you've got more than that. Okay, don't just hit the top six and think you're done. There's actually quite a bit of information in here. Specifically, look, Hispanic collections. I mean, those are gonna be pretty big, right? For this project. You've also got specific image database. We've got uh, PBS documentaries that are phenomenal. I would look at that too. See if they've got documentaries specifically on the Mexican muralist or Diego Rivera. But we're going to start with Art Store. And oh, one quick note you should always right click and open the link in a new tab. That way, this is always here. When I'm doing art research, I start in Art Store because I want to know more information about my image. Um, I have been told that in August, Art Store and JSTOR are going to combine. Just a heads up. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and log into my Art Store account. And this is, if you don't have an Art Store account yet, you do have to create it through our computers here on campus. So either just come to the library, it takes like two minutes to do, or you can meet with me and I'll, you know, if you're at home or whatever, and we can, I'll help you set it up. Okay, I am, the same thing applies. Okay, and you want an account because that way you can actually save the images. But I'm gonna search art store and I know I'm looking for Diego Rivera. So I'm gonna do This. And I know I'm looking for this specific one, but I'm just going to put in the term night and let's see what we get. Ah, here's the one I'm looking for. Okay, this is the night of the rich. But if you'll notice here, here it is in Spanish. I need to add that to my search string. And I'm actually gonna add it right here, okay? That's important because if that's the original name for it, that's the language the original is in, a lot of times the cataloging is gonna refer to it in the original language. Um, I I like this one. It tells me where it's at. Uh, sometimes, you know, it could have a totally different title than what's in your textbook or what's in another book. Again, the older the piece, the more titles it's going to have, which is kind of frustrating. We know the date range when it was done. That's important. You wouldn't necessarily put that in a search, but I always record it same thing with his living date range. I'm always going to record it because if I'm looking at an article, somebody may have copied this and they're talking about the copy. I'm talking about the mural that was done in the 1920s. Okay. Uh, the location is also a big thing. A lot of times, I mean, we know it's in the education building, but um, might have to do it in Spanish. Right. Um measurements, all kinds of different things that I can do. Uh, fresco, it was a fresco, so I may have to put that into my search. Instead of murals, I could do fresco. 
We have to match the words that they're using. The other thing is I've got the image. What I can do is add it to a group. And one of the neat things about Art Store is that I can add the item, uh, Mexican art, okay, add, okay. But I can also zoom in and it recalibrates, they, they digitize these things at such a high DPI that you can zoom in on certain parts. Okay, so I'm, I'm paying attention to the short hair on the women. Okay, that's a, that's a thing. So maybe I want to just look at this. Maybe in my presentation or my paper, I'm gonna talk about this. So what I can also do is I can add to group and add the detail view. That's gonna add just this zoomed in piece. And I'm going to add it to my group. Okay. Now, another thing I can also look at, and I noticed this, is they actually have some of his sketches and renderings. So I might even be able to see some of his sketches. Like this is part of it where it's a specific piece of it. Let me go back to results. So I'm going to just, in my search, let's do Diego Rivera. And then I'm going to come over here and I can even look and say, okay, I've got the painting. So maybe I'm wanting, um, his drawings and watercolors. Maybe that's what I'm looking at. Okay. Um, because I'm looking to see if he they've got any of his sketches of that art, of that mural. They have some of his others, even up close sketches of his peoples for it. But you know, if I can find the ones on my article or my piece of artwork, yes, um, I'm gonna want that. You know, that might be a really good thing to add. for my piece, but you do kind of have to go out a little bit more, broaden your topic and do a little digging because it could be um, under you know, the noches, it could be under night, it could have other combinations. And so that's something really particular to remember. Again, sometimes less is more when you're looking for something specific. Um, but if we wanted any of these, we could add them to that project or that group. Now, let's say I'm done adding my images in there. So I'm going to do browse groups. I'm looking at my groups. Mexican art. Okay. As you can see, I have some things in there. And here's the two that I just put in there. Okay. Now, if I'm getting ready to write my paper or do my PowerPoint presentation, I can come up here to export. If I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation, I can tell it to export to PowerPoint. It'll create the PowerPoint for me. It will put every image that I have checked or if I've checked all of them, it'll put those each on their own slide and all of the information will go on the notes page for each slide including my close-up views. If I'm wanting to put these into a paper, do them as a zip file and then unzip them once they get downloaded to your computer. Okay. So got my information, I've checked Art Store. But beyond Art Store, next we're gonna go into JSTOR. JSTOR is gonna be articles. And there's a couple of different things to deal with with JSTOR. Most of you know JSTOR, it's kind of the bread and butter for the arts and humanities. But key thing is you always want to do advanced search. Okay. I'm gonna use my same search strings. And that's one of the really nice things about JSTOR. If you've worked with me before, you'll know I, I do a lot of stuff with Google Scholar and we'll do that in just a minute. But the thing with it is, is that you get a better search in JSTOR than you do through Google Scholar because Google Scholar doesn't acknowledge your ands and ors. So you can't do multiple search terms at the same time. 
The other thing with JSTOR is you always want to select your access type to everything. Again, we've got interlibrary loan. We just need to identify these things. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Um, one of the drawbacks to JSTOR is that JSTOR does whole text searching. JSTOR doesn't use a record between you and the item itself. It's going to search through that entire journal article for whatever words you put in to that search. So what I might do on this one, I'm going to modify my search and I'm going to do the less is more approach. Okay, so Diego Rivera and Mural is going to be massively huge. I know this going in. So I'm going to just look for my specific piece to start, but then I can always come back and add to it. But I want to see articles that specifically mention possibly the mural I'm looking for, okay? And then maybe broaden out after that. But I can look at this article, okay? And you can see it's it's just the article. I don't really get a record for it. But the trick to JSTOR is to go ahead and click download for the article. It doesn't actually download the article. It just brings it into a PDF format. And then you can do control F or command F and search inside of it. And you can see how it's pulling up and highlighting. Sometimes the highlighting is off. Sometimes it will highlight right here, but it makes it so much easier to find things in these articles. Chronicle got the name wrong. The mural, mural is actually entitled Night of the Rich, but they were in the business of closing a story. Okay, interesting. So I'm going to go up here and see what the Chronicle titled it. Oh, Staircase News, Dr. Seems Lunch Club, and the corner on which Diego Rivera Maxwell will paint a mural and set the place for his winter. Painting is one of his masterpieces entitled The Kiss of Judas. Okay, so I might be looking at articles re referencing it to that. All kinds of different things you can find in here. I would look around it and see what all it's saying. Sometimes it'll only have your word in it once because they've only, they're only referring to that mural or that piece of artwork by the full name once, and then they give it a nickname going through, or they just reference it as the painting or the subject. So you really need to read around it to see how, the, what they're really truly discussing in the article itself. And if it's something that you want, download. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop this into my SciWheel test account. Okay. And it's going to auto pop the PDF in there for me, which I like. If it does it, it is great. I'm going to go to my SciWheel account. Like I said, I will typically have my SciWheel sitting open. And here's the last one I just added in. It did not come across correctly, as you can see. So I'm just going to go and edit it. I've still got all of my info here. And I'm just going to copy and paste. I mean, it's as simple as that. But that's why I do it right then because I can just go ahead and copy and paste and don't have to dig it back out. And oh, that's not where I needed to put it. Okay, uh, title of the journal is the Human Ecology Review, volume three, issue number one. Okay. Three, issue number one. Then I need the 115 to 126, 1996. Okay, and then save. 
Okay, so now I know all my citation information is correct. Um, it actually uploaded the PDF for me, which I love when it does it, but if it doesn't, then you know to just go in, grab that PDF since you've downloaded it and throw it in here so that you are, always will have your PDF right there. Okay. So that's JSTOR. Oh, and I didn't. Okay. So another thing that we're gonna search is going to be under more art databases, ProQuest Central, okay? Uh, fantastic database that a lot of people will skip. But what ProQuest Central is doing is ProQuest is a massive company of databases. They own loads of databases. And so ProQuest Central is gonna be searching across those. Now it does do a full in uh, full in-depth search. You know, we talked about swoop search and how it kind of skims the surface. But ProQuest Central is designed to search across all of the ProQuest databases. So you actually get a full search. So that's what the, the difference is. Um, you always want advanced search again. Again, I'm going to take my uh, search terms. And again, I'm going to start off very specific. If there are items on this particular mural, I want to see those first. But then also remember, we have to match our words. So we might come back in and do the uh, public education or um, murals or frescoes. I don't, in ProQuest, I don't like for it to search anywhere. I will typically start with abstract. But remember, a lot of humanities journals do not require an abstract. So then it can't search it. And then you lose items. So I suggest doing document text okay. and then search. Okay. So let's click on here and let's see what we've got. Diego Rivera. Okay. Now this is talking about a movie of him. Okay, and let's control F, night. Ah, there it is. Night of the Rich, okay? So they use this painting as an illustration. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, what was that? Let's look at this one. So I'm going to open the PDF. Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Abstract details. Okay, Miss Oracle exams. Social scientists on dogs in the country century. Okay, so that's our time period. Rituals and contemporary ones. Generated through distinctive methodologies. Okay. So many writers and artists experimented with these substances and produced an extensive repertoire of interesting references. Ones and images delivered an important impact. Okay. Okay, so this is actually an article in a journal. The language is Spanish. If you cannot speak Spanish, this might not be something for you. If you can, awesome, grab it. But not everything is going to be in English, especially when you're dealing with uh, artwork of another country. Most of it's going to be in the original language of the country. Now I can come up and modify my search and add in my other terms. Now I've got a lot more, okay? Uh, but again, that may not be what I want. I may not want that much. So I can come over here and do subject, do more. 
Anytime they say more, click it because that way you can actually go in and look at the different subject lines that are coming up in this search and click on them. Public art, yeah, we want public art, 20th century, yeah. Hispanic, uh, not necessarily Hispanic Americans, but all kinds of things that we can do, okay, and apply. If you cannot read Spanish or another foreign language, you might want to limit your language, okay? And then you can go through. And what's really nice is when you click on the title in ProQuest, what it's going to do is it's actually going to show you other items that are slightly related to this item. So that can lead you into other items uh, on topic or not, but it's, it's a great way to kind of discover things. Okay, so we're gonna get out of this. And the next database we're gonna go into is gonna be WorldCat, okay? Um, Anytime you are searching WorldCat, you are also going to search Google Books, and you do have to Google Google Books. The reason you're going to search both of these at the same time, anytime I'm searching Google Books, I've also got WorldCat up, is because they search opposite of each other. And it's kind of like the two halves to the perfect whole. Okay. So I can use my search strings in WorldCat because WorldCat is a catalog of libraries worldwide. So I can tell it to look for my words in the keyword or anywhere it wants to, or I can tell it to just look for them in the subject. Okay, I can play around with that. I can also say I only want the books in English. Um, I don't limit my type. Just know that in art, here in WorldCat, visual materials means DVD and VHS, not what we typically think it means in art. Our subtype limits, I will say any audience is not juvenile. That will take out the children's books. And any content is not fiction. And search. And again, I can play with my searches. Didn't exactly think that they, unless the entire book is about that specific painting or artwork, it's not going to be in the subject phrase. And that's where our Google Books comes in. Okay. So, oh, yeah, here we go. Night of the Rich or Orgy Night of the Rich is another added name to it. Okay. Um. But I can also play around with my search and do, let me just do Knight and Diego. Okay. One of the issues with looking for artwork in books is that in the cataloging record, they will not give us a list of the images or the illustrations. A lot of times if it's an older book, you don't get a whole lot of information in the cataloging record anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Google Books. Now, the opposite is how Google Books, Google Books searches. So Google Books is actually going to search inside of the book, which is very helpful for art research. But we can't do these long search strings because remember, Google does not acknowledge your ORs. Okay, so we have to think about how he would be written in a book. So we're going to do Diego Rivera like this, because that's how it would be in the book. And then we're going to pick another one from this line. So I might want to just do Night of the Rich. Okay, and then I'm going to do a search. And what it's doing is it's searching inside of these books for my words. Um, if there is a preview for it, that means I can actually search inside of the book, but that's only for newer books. So I can go in, really, I'm gonna take out Diego Rivera, and I'm gonna see where it has my terms, Night of the Rich. If the page that those words appear on is part of the actual preview for the book, 
then I can click on it and see the entire page. Again, remember, they may only call it the full title once, but they're gonna, they may be talking about it even more further down. They just won't call it the full title. I can go back to view all, I can see oh, cover photo, not in the niche. Um, or the other thing I do is I will go out of it and I will do, I will X that with the search and I'll go to the copyright and I will look at the table of contents if they show it to me. This one did not, and I hate it when they do that, but I can see it over here sometimes too. Okay, um, I will use this to determine if it's just that one chapter. So I looked at, you know, all the pages that my term appears on and they seem to be coming out of this one chapter. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an interlibrary loan, but just for this book chapter, because I've got the title of it, I've got the page numbers. Sometimes I'll just put the chapter, the page numbers, comma, and also ask for the bibliography because that can lead me to other sources. But I know that this book, or at least this chapter is talking about my piece of artwork. Now, what do we do when we go in and, you know, again, these older books, we don't necessarily get a preview for. So I'm going to find one of those. Okay, so here's one it's from 1987. Okay, um, again, these murals date back to the 20s, so you know they're pretty old. I can kind of sort of see into it. A lot of times they don't even let you see this, but I do know that my search term at least appears once. It tells me I don't have a preview. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the title of this book and I'm actually going to go to WorldCat and I'm just going to search for the record because at least that way I can at least see a, a catalog record for it. You know, maybe I can get some information on the book itself. Okay, so here it is. I can see, the, oh, I get the table of contents. I sometimes will get an abstract of the book itself to see like this. Sometimes it can be an entire paragraph, but I get that it's criticism and interpretation of his works. It's an exhibition catalog. Guys, most of the time I will find more information under these subjects than I will anywhere else. But at least this lets me know it's not just images of his work. There is criticism and interpretation of the work. It's an exhibition catalog. So that tells me it was done in conjunction with a huge ex exhibition. So a lot of times with that, they will have um, really good high quality images, but they also have scholarly uh, papers presented and those come with it. It doesn't specifically say the one that I'm looking for, but I know it mentions it in here. So it may even be in this um, existing principal public mural images, but um, mural paintings by him, uh, political chronology, it may talk about it. Um, it just depends on what they're talking about. So vision of an industrial age. It could be talking about it in there. So I'm going to decide, yes, I want this book. Typically, you would come up here, you would click borrow from another library, it would fill out the form for you, you do zero, hit enter, and there you go. But again, that link is not working. So I'm just going to go library, interlibrary loan, book. I got the title, I've got the author, and request it. Okay. And then I would put it in my side wheel, use my tag of ILL. I'd go ahead and make sure all the information is correct in the citation and move on. So that's how you utilize both of these at the same time and why you would, okay? Um, this is something I do all the time, it's phenomenal. And the last thing we're gonna look at is gonna be Google Scholar. And the reason we're gonna look for in Google Scholar is a couple of things. You do have to Google Google Scholar, but you need to make sure that your library links are set up correctly. That's going to be a big, huge help to you. So in order to do that, you need to go up to these three little lines right here. You're going to drop down to settings. And the third one down here, it says library links. 
you want to make sure it says the University of Texas at Tyler. If that box is checked, you're good to go. If it is not, then what you do is you type in Tyler up here in this search box and you hit search and it's usually the last one. It's like the third one down that will come up and then you hit save. Okay, so the benefit to searching Google Scholar with those library links is it's actually gonna search our databases from the back. Um, sometimes I will start in Google Scholar to identify the databases and the journals I need to be looking into. But again, same thing with all the other Google searches I can do. It'll, it'll recognize the quotes, but it will not recognize my ands and ors. So I have to think of how they would have it written in the article. Oh, and you want articles. And we're going to search. Okay, it will search Google Books. Um, I will generally find a better search in Google Books specifically. But it's searching books, it's searching articles. So this one's from the Western Journal of Communication. And I can, it tells me I have the PDF right here. UT Tyler Access, I just click the PDF. There's the article, okay? Um, but I do pay attention to what databases it's looking in, what journals it may be looking in, because I'm gonna get a better search Remember JSTOR, I'm going to get a better search of JSTOR in JSTOR because I can use my multiple words and my ands and ors and all those combinations. But that does tell me, you know, oh, there's quite a few in JSTOR here. But it's also going to search outside of that. It's going to search in citations of stuff. So I know that this is, that that's that book that we were looking at. If I hadn't already found it, I would go and look that up in WorldCat because I can tell it's a book and look at that. Um, it will also search university repositories. So like for us, we do not put our thesis and dissertations into a database. We have our own repository. A lot of universities will also have their faculties, you know, journal articles and publications and stuff like that in a repository. It's gonna search that. But it's also gonna find items that we may not have access to. Again, you know that you can interlibrary loan it. So like here, this is one that we don't have full text to, but I've got pretty much all of the information I need. And if I don't, I hit the site button and that gives me all the information I need to do the interlibrary loan form, okay? So guys, that's kind of a, a quick overview of doing research for Mexican art. Like I said, it's quick. I just wanted you to see how it all kind of flows together. So you've had all these different lessons, but they're all separate. This is how it all flows, how it flows together. You typically want to start with looking in books, especially with older items. Um, and you want to start with your search really narrow, but then remember how these things are structured and then broaden out. Okay, remember that the if you're looking for a specific piece, that it may not be listed in the book record because it, they may talk about it all through the book. And depending on how old that book is, depends on the cataloging record and how old it is. And sometimes it would just be under the artist. Um, so that's where, you know, Google Books, maybe I can see inside of it, maybe not, but I'm, you know, I'm going to look both places. Um, if it comes down to it, I'm going to roll the dice and I'm going to interlibrary loan it. And that is very important to understand. Sometimes you just don't know if your topic is going to be in the book until you get that book in your hands. And we understand that. So go ahead and interlibrary loan it. If you come to the desk and you just look through the book and realize it doesn't have anything and give it back, we are good. Okay. So if I'm still kind of on the fence about a book or an article, I'm going to roll the dice. I'm going to get it because there have been times when I have gotten books in that looked fantastic. And then I go through them and I'm like, nope. And then there are books that I'm like, I don't know. It just has a very vague title. I know it has something about my artist. And the book comes in and it's phenomenal. 
on my art, the history, what was going on in the time period. I mean, just has tons of information. Okay. So we understand that and we'll still get it for you. Okay. I'm here. I will meet with you as many times as you want. You can call me. You can come by my office. You can um, book a session, a meeting with me or just email me. Um, I'll meet with you as many times as you want. I'll even meet with you over Zoom. Okay. Just, just let me know. Okay. Thank you guys. Enjoy Mexican art research. It's actually really, really cool. Oh, this behind me, this is actually um, done by a Mexican architect in Mexico City. So we tend to think of Mexico as this dry, dusty place. And all it is is some step, you know, um, temples from long ago, Aztecs and, and Mayas and stuff. But that's not the case. And I wanted to show you that there is loads and loads of art and architecture and all kinds of different things in Mexico. So we can't always go based on what we've seen in movies and stereotypes. <laughs>